Hollywood has been plotting a remake of Katsuhiro Otomo's Akira for almost two decades. The project has a complicated and somewhat controversial history, but Leonardo DiCaprio remains attached as a producer, and he seems determined to make the live-action Akira a reality. We've got all the details right here. When Akira dropped in 1988, bootleg copies spread across U.S. campuses like wildfire. Leonardo DiCaprio was a teenager when Akira hit the States, and it's clearly made a big impression on him. The Oscar winner has been a big fan of anime for years now, Akira in particular. His production company Appian Way got involved with the Warner Brothers-led remake back in 2008, and the first thing DiCaprio did was put the fans at ease. He told MTV, I'm a big fan of Japanese anime. I know there's a lot of loyal fans out there of the project and die-hard fans, so we're going to try to do the best job we possibly can, and we're not going to make the movie until the script is in the right shape." After Earth writer Gary Whitta was the man tasked with penning the screenplay. According to Whitta, an Akira trilogy was being quietly planned, but the first installment faltered. Director Rory Robinson, best known for 2013 sci-fi The Last Days on Mars, later revealed that producers put the project on the back burner for financial reasons. He said, They couldn't get the budget under 200 million bucks for that draft, which was a bit rich for what was proposed as an R-rated movie with no stars. Warner Brothers had Robinson put together a sizzle reel, and the Irish filmmaker even shot some test footage for the film, recreating some iconic Akira shots. Akira takes place three decades after Tokyo is leveled by a devastating explosion. The megacity that springs up in the aftermath is Neo-Tokyo, home to the young biker gang that the story revolves around. When one of the boys develops powerful psychokinetic abilities, the city faces destruction all over again. It's a big-budget story, which is probably why DiCaprio and his partners at Warner Brothers decided to film the whole movie in California. Making Akira totally in-state means it qualifies for an $18.5 million tax credit allocation, Warner Brothers confirmed. The studio told Deadline, "...we are thrilled with the opportunity to shoot Akira in California. The availability of top-notch crew members plus the wide variety of location choices and predictable weather are second to none." Needless to say, fans of the original are deeply concerned about this move. The setting and aesthetic of Akira are central to its appeal, and recreating this in the Golden State won't be easy. Taika Waititi was attached to the Akira remake before his first Marvel movie made him a household name in Hollywood. The New Zealander opened up about his plans for Akira while promoting 2017's Thor Ragnarok, revealing that he intends to take inspiration from Otomo's original manga, not the anime. Waititi told The Hollywood Reporter, "...who wants to see a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the film? Nobody. Also, you have to make it entertaining." I think it's really dangerous to make these films very serious cyberpunk. There was a time and a place for that, and there may be a time and place for that tone again, but you have to make fresh takes on things." Waititi is reportedly co-writing the movie with Always Be My Maybe scribe Michael Golomko. When Dazed caught up with Waititi in 2018, he revealed that the script was still in the early stages of development. He said, "...I haven't really started to get my head around it yet." There are six gigantic books to go through. It's so rich. But Akira is one of my favorite films. My mom took me to see it when I was 13, and it changed my life." Filming the movie in the States is one thing, but setting it there is another entirely. In April 2019, Production Weekly shared what appeared to be the first synopsis for DiCaprio and Waititi's Akira, and it made some pretty grim readings for fans of the source material. There were a ton of fundamental changes, including moving the action from Neo-Tokyo to Neo-Manhattan. The synopsis read, "...when a young man's telekinesis is discovered by the military, he is taken in to be turned into a superweapon, and his brother must race to save him before Manhattan is destroyed by his powers." Kaneda is a bar owner in Neo-Manhattan who is stunned when his brother Tetsuo is abducted by government agents. Films like John Wick prove that Manhattan offers the perfect palette for this kind of story. And some fans may have been willing to get on board with this had it been the only change. In Otomo's story, teenagers Kaneda and Tetsuo are longtime friends, not brothers. The fact that Kaneda now owns a bar suggests that he and Tetsuo will be aged up for the movie, but according to another industry website, this won't be the case. Backstage has since released what appears to be a casting call for Akira, and it reveals that producers are looking for age-appropriate actors to play Tetsuo and Kaneda. 
who will be 17 and 18 years old in the movie. The whole Neo-Manhattan idea actually dates back to when Warner Brothers first negotiated a deal for Akira in 2002. Blade director Stephen Norrington was hired, but concerns about his involvement were raised after he told The Hollywood Reporter that he planned to make the story, quote, more accessible, presumably to Western audiences. When Norrington departed the project, the studio turned to Rory Robinson and Gary Whitta, who tried to remain faithful to the source material on a technicality. In their version of Akira, Manhattan had been sold and was legally foreign territory owned and populated by the Japanese. Does this mean the leads would have been Japanese? Probably not. Whitta told Collider, It wasn't New Tokyo, but there were Americans who kind of lived in little Americanized quarters of it. I felt it was a way to do a kind of cool Western-Eastern fusion of the two ideas. Not fully Japanese, not fully Westernized. In other words, he dug the cool bikes and the whole cyberpunk thing, but he wanted a Hollywood star to lead the charge. Keanu Reeves once came very close to playing the part of Kaneda in the live-action Akira movie. When the Robinson Witta version fell through, Warner Brothers hired Book of Eli co-director Albert Hughes and Harry Potter screenwriter Steve Kloves. Reeves became their target, but despite some constructive talks, the Matrix star ultimately decided to pass. It was a huge blow for the project. Warner Brothers reportedly shut down Akira's pre-viz department and sent most of the staff it had working on the film home. It turns out Reeves wasn't the first actor the studio had contacted about the role of Kaneda. Warner Brothers reportedly reached out to Garrett Hedlund, Chris Pine, Michael Fassbender, Joaquin Phoenix, and even Justin Timberlake, while Robert Pattinson, Andrew Garfield, and James McAvoy were said to be in contention for the role of Tetsuo. When fans discovered that a version of Akira starring Justin Timberlake was a very real possibility, they lashed out. One person who was particularly vocal about the all-white shortlist of actors was George Takei. The Star Trek legend predicted that Warner Brothers would have a huge bomb on its hands if it whitewashed Akira. He told The Advocate, If they're going to do that, why don't they do something original? Because what they do is offend Asians. The tradition in Hollywood has always been to buy a project, change it completely, and flop with it. I think it's pointless. So I thought I would save Warner Brothers a bit of failure by warning them of what will most likely happen if they continue in that vein. This is exactly what happened to Paramount after it cast Scarlett Johansson as the major in its remake of the 90s anime classic Ghost in the Shell. The studio ultimately admitted that the whitewashing backlash badly hurt the movie, which was a critical and commercial failure. It seems like Warner Brothers is heeding the signs. A casting call put out by the studio appeared to confirm that it was looking for Asian actors for the lead roles. Run All Night director Jauma Sarah replaced Albert Hughes in 2011, but it wasn't long before he hit a brick wall. He was already working with a reduced budget of $90 million, and sources suggested that Warner Brothers wanted to drop that figure again, aiming to spend as little as $60 million on Akira. In 2014, Call It Sarah confirmed that he was still trying to get a scaled-down version made. Unfortunately, the Spanish director also made some incredibly ill-advised comments about Otomo's story. He told Coming Soon, Nobody's interesting. Tetsuo's interesting because weird shit happens to him, and Kaneda is so two-dimensional. That's part of the Japanese culture. They never have strong characters. They're used as a way to move the other philosophy forward. Unsurprisingly, Colette Sarah soon found himself out of the picture. Jordan Peele was linked to Akira not long after his Oscar-winning directorial debut Get Out premiered, though he quickly decided that taking charge of a Hollywood remake wasn't for him. The actor and filmmaker told horror website The 13th Floor that he was capable of directing the new Akira. He just didn't want to. Peele said, Akira is one of my favorite movies, and I think obviously the story justifies as big a budget as you can possibly dream of. But the real question for me is, do I want to do pre-existing material, or do I want to do original content? At the end of the day, I want to do original stuff. Peel's rejection came on the back of George Miller declaring himself out. The Australian director was asked about Akira after 2015's Mad Max Fury Road became a roaring success, but he couldn't fit it into his busy schedule. He told Yahoo, There was talk of Akira, but I've got so many things on my dance card, I don't have time to do everything. In May 2019, Akira fans got some much-needed good news regarding the long-gestating live-action adaptation Warner Brothers had finally set a release date. Taika Waititi's film was going to hit cineplexes on May 21, 2021. The studio confirmed, but another huge development was just around the corner. 
In July 2019, news that Waititi had agreed to a deal to helm another Thor movie broke. It was great news for Marvel fans, but it was a cruel blow for those who have been waiting patiently for Akira. The proposed schedule for Thor, Love and Thunder clashed with that of Akira, and the latter film was put on hold indefinitely as a result. Waititi remains attached, but Akira is now back in limbo, and the headache continues. <laughs> Any new version of Akira still has to go through Katsuhiro Otomo. When the Japanese artist, writer, and director sat down with Forbes in 2017, he revealed that he was, quote, basically done with Akira, having finished his original manga and helmed his very own anime version. Otomo confirmed that he's happy for a new filmmaker to take Akira in a different direction, so long as he gets final approval. He said, I accepted the offer for a live-action Akira to be made, so I am generally okay with whatever they want to do with it. However, I did give one major condition to do a live-action version, and that is that I had to check and approve the scenario. As always, the fundamental question on adapting anything is whether you follow the host work strictly or do something new with it. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.